1928, Frederick Griffith had discovered the phenomenon of transformation in bacteria in that he took heat killed 3S streptococcus pneumoniae cells, mixed the heat killed ones with live type 2R cells, and wound up getting live 3S cells out of it. What he figured was that something from the heat killed 3S cells, some chemical component, had gone into the live 2R cells and transformed them into 3S cells. He called the phenomenon transformation. But it didn't escape the notice of people thinking about this, that whatever this was, it transformed those cells so that those cells and all their descendants continued to be 3S cells. In other words, whatever went into those cells and changed them was essentially the genetic material, the stuff that determines what they're like and is passed on generation to generation. So it seemed it was important to find out what chemical component was the one that was responsible for transformation. The people who studied this came up with a set of experiments to determine that were Avery McLeod and McCarty. Working in a U.S. naval lab, uh, they actually completed this work in 1944. Now, what they did was they started out with the heat killed 3S cells. And if you think about these cells, What's in them? They're bacterial cells. They're going to contain the typical things you find in organisms as far as macromolecules. You've got DNA, RNA, proteins, lipids, carbohydrates. And of course some water and small molecules. But really if you're going to have something that's going to carry the information, it's got to be one of these and so they looked at this and thought, okay, what are the possibilities? What's, what's the likely one? At the time, the most likely candidate was considered to be proteins. Because it was already known that proteins catalyzed reactions, structure the first enzyme or its first few enzymes had been discovered. It was known that proteins were highly variable. They could fold up into a variety of different shapes. They seemed the interesting molecule, the one that had the variability that was required in order to carry the information be the genetic material. Everything else here looked pretty unlikely, and particularly DNA didn't look very likely. I, it was long and stringy. It was long and stringy in any organism you looked at. It didn't seem to have much variation in structure, and so it didn't seem likely that it could be different enough so that DNA it could specify how to make a cow, and another form could specify how to make a cabbage. So they set out to try these. Well, so how are you going to determine which one of these components is responsible for transformation? It would be nice to be able to just purify out one component, try it, and see if that component by itself will do it. And they actually did attempt that. But they recognized that there were going to be criticisms of this because in the 1940s, the techniques of purification weren't really good enough. So even if you had pulled out what, as pure a DNA as you could possibly get, which they did, and find that it would do transformation, a critic could say, well, there's still some protein in there. So they needed to come up with another way of approaching this. So instead of just purifying one component and trying that, they took the opposite approach. They treated with enzymes to get rid of one component at a time. So for instance, they treated this mixture, heat killed 3S cells, with a protease enzyme, an enzyme that would hydrolyze peptide bonds in the protein and break it down into small, small oligopeptides or free amino acids. Well, if you do that, then what you have remaining is a set of components everything there except the proteins. So you've got the DNA, the RNA, the lipids, and the carbohydrates. So this reduced set, now you can test this and see, will this still do transformation? Now, the prediction would be, if protein is the genetic material, there's the hypothesis that protein was the genetic material. If that's right, if protein is the genetic material, that hypothesis predicts that this mixture, everything in there minus the protein, is not going to be capable of doing transformation. How are we going to test that? How are we going to determine if this will do transformation? Now, if you think about Griffith's experiment, Griffith worked by, he took heat killed 3S cells, live 2R cells, and injected them into mice. He knew he'd gotten transformation if the mice died. 
Fortunately, for the mice at least, Avery McCaw and McCarty came up with a way of doing this without having to put the bacteria into animals. And what they did was this. They took their reduced extract They mixed it with live 2R cells. Now, if transformation occurs, you should get some 3S cells out of this. The only problem is that they found in experiments that they've done that even under the best conditions, you used the entire heat-killed 3S cell extract and got transformation, it didn't transform all the 2R cells. If you think about it, what, of course, what we now know is happening is to our cells are picking up DNA from the environment and sometimes that DNA is incorporated into their chromosome and sometimes the piece that's incorporated contains the genes that make it from a 2R cell into a 3S cell. That's not going to happen in every one. In fact, under the very best conditions, it wouldn't happen in more than one in a thousand cells. So if we just took these 2R cells that have been mixed with this extract and plated them we'd get mostly 2R cells regardless of whether there is a, a little bit of transformation taking place. And we wouldn't be able to find them on the plate. So before doing that, they got rid of the remaining 2R cells by adding antibodies, anti-2R antibodies. Those antibodies are specific to the 2R cells. They would agglutinate the 2R cells they then centrifuge them. The agglutinated 2R cells accumulate down the bottom. Now, if transformation has occurred, in addition to all those 2R cells that agglutinated, there are a few cells that were transformed into 3S. Those 3S cells would not bind to these anti-2R antibodies. They would still be up here in the supernatant. And so what we do is plate the supernatant. And look for colonies. Now, again, this extract right here They've treated it with protease, so it has everything that came out of the heat killed 3S cells except the protein. If protein is the genetic material, then we expect to see here no colonies. We've gotten rid of the protein. There shouldn't be any transformation. All the cells should still be 2R. We've agglutinated those, plate the supernatant. There shouldn't be anything in it. In fact, when they did this, they got big, slimy 3S colonies. So, the hypothesis that protein was the genetic material predicted that we would see no colonies. They actually did get colonies. Therefore, this result falsifies the hypothesis that protein is the genetic material. Now, on the other hand, if any other one of these were the genetic material, and say, for instance, we have a hypothesis that DNA is the genetic material, if DNA is the genetic material, we treat the 3S extract with protease, get rid of the protein, DNA is still there. When we do this experiment, we would expect transformation still to take place, and so we would have expected to get colonies. So this result supports the hypothesis that DNA is the genetic material. Of course, it would also support the hypothesis that lipids are the genetic material or anything else that remained there. So they needed another experiment. Another experiment that they could do to test this is to take the he killed 3S cell extract and treat it with an enzyme that would get rid of the DNA. And that's what they did. Here's the he killed 3S cells. Treat these with an enzyme that hydrolyzes DNA, in other words, a DNase. And you would have remaining then RNA, proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. Now, the hypothesis that protein is the genetic material 
says that this mixture here should still do transformation. It's got the protein still in it. The hypothesis that DNA is the genetic material would predict that this mixture, not having DNA in it, will be unable to do transformation. And they used the same procedure again to test to see if it would do transformation. So they take their reduced mixture here, now the heat kill 3S cells minus the DNA after treatment with DNAs. Mix with live 2R cells. And anti-2R antibodies. Centrifuge. Again, 2R cells, agglutinate, and centrifuge out to the bottom of the tube, and then they play the supernate. Now again, let's think about the predictions the two hypotheses make. The hypothesis that DNA is the genetic material, because the DNA has been removed, predicts that we're not going to get any transformation. The 2R cells will remain 2R cells. Antibodies agglutinate all of them here. We should plate the supernatant and see nothing. The hypothesis that protein is the genetic material would say, you got rid of the DNA, you still have the protein, you should still get transformation, now we should get 3S colonies. In fact, their actual result they got no colonies. This again falsifies the hypothesis that protein is the genetic material, the protein hypothesis predicted colonies, and it supports the hypothesis that DNA is the genetic material because Having removed the DNA, we would not expect, if that hypothesis is correct, to get any transformation and therefore we shouldn't get colonies. They didn't. As a result, they could conclude that the hypothesis that DNA was the genetic material was supported, the hypothesis that protein was the genetic material was falsified. They reported this evidence, and actually they were much more cautious about specifying their results. All they really said was that Protein, it, it eliminated protein as the transforming principle, the material responsible for transformation, and it supported the hypothesis that DNA was the material responsible for transformation. But certainly most people looking at this would have realized that it was equivalent to saying that they supported the hypothesis that DNA was the genetic material. Their work helped to turn the tide of opinion and after various other studies were published that came to the same result, it came to the same conclusion, after a number of years, people basically came around to the idea that probably DNA was the genetic material.